Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Can I say to all of you who are new and have joined us recently, can I say this to you? If you happen to miss a day, don't worry about going back and watch what you've missed. Just watch the current day because these keep coming all the time. It doesn't take much for them to build up. And there may be days when we do miss, life can get busy, circumstances can happen, and we do miss a day. So just watch the current day. And even though, though every day I'm just adding another layer to the story, you'll pick it up uh, in time. Well, this series is called How to Live in the Power of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost has just been, we've celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit. So how do we live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Acts, uh, the book of Acts. Now, the book of Acts is, is really the story of the early church, and it was a, a story that fascinated me. And I spent nearly a year reading the book of Acts, and every time I'd get to the end of it, uh, I would then start again, and I read it, and then I would read it again. And then when I got to the end of it, I would read it again. And so I read the book of Acts for an entire year. And every time I came across the Holy Spirit, I highlighted it in my Bible and I highlighted the various ways that the Holy Spirit worked. See, it was when I was a boy, as I said yesterday, when I was a boy, a Catholic priest had come to me and talked to me about living with the power of the Holy Spirit, that it would make the action of Jesus in my life more real and it would connect me to the love of the Father and the Father's plan. And that the Father, Son and Spirit, whilst three persons in one, were three persons. And when we put the whole picture together, it was amazing how it affected your whole life. And the Holy Spirit was there particularly to speak and to guide and to lead us. Well, in the book of Acts, it starts in chapter 1 and it's, and it's written by Luke. Luke, who's written the Gospel of Luke, he ends and then we pick up the story again of what the early church was alike. And to be honest with you, without the Holy Spirit, the early church in many ways would have struggled. As we'll see in these few verses that we're about to read now, uh, as I finished off yesterday saying, the apostles were with Jesus for three years. They saw Jesus do his miracles. They listened to Jesus. People were amazed by how he spoke with such great authority. And, and here they are. Jesus ends by saying, and yet there is something more that you need. A helper, an advocate will come. John calls the Holy Spirit a helper, an advocate will come. And so we read at the beginning of, these, of, the, of, of the book of Acts, we be, begin to pick up the story of how the Holy Spirit came into the lives of people. Now, this is all well and good for them back then. But you and I, wherever we are, whatever city, whatever town, whatever country we are in right now, how does this affect us? That's what we're looking at. And how do we use it in our prayer and in our daily life? So let's read from chapter 1, verse 1 of the book of Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they'd come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when, the, when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It's just such a very rich passage of scripture. So Luke writes to Theophilus, his friend, and he, he says, I've written everything that Jesus did and said in my previous writing, but now I, I'm, I'm going to continue to write the story of where we are. And he says, uh, until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he'd chosen. And then he says, after his suffering, as in his death, um, 
He then rose. He presented himself, himself alive to many uh, to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So after Jesus has risen, Luke is remembering that Jesus kept appearing to them. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, uh, but to wait there for the promise uh, of the Father. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. Jesus instructs the apostles. He says, wait, the, for the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? The promise of the Father was the Holy Spirit. God the Father promised that the Holy Spirit would come. Why would the Holy Spirit come? Well, if we go down to verse 8, we read, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, if you look at the original meaning of that word power, it's where we get the word dynamite from. Like it is a robust power that comes into our life. It's not a power that will just come when we get to heaven one day, but it's a power that we are meant to receive right now. Now, if you listen to the weekly, which is our Sunday message that I just gave on, on Sunday, you would have heard me talk about that the Holy Spirit over and over is received, that the, God sends the Holy Spirit, but we receive the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes into us, we are changed. It's not just we're changed at a theoretical level or some airy-fairy spiritual level that we don't, uh, don't connect with or can understand. But the change that comes upon us when the Holy Spirit comes upon us gives us abilities, capacities, insight to be what we cannot be ourselves. As I've shared in the last couple of days, I was raised Catholic. I was confirmed, as in received the sacrament of confirmation when the Holy Spirit came. But to be honest with you, I didn't understand what that was when I was 10 years old. But as an adult, I've come to understand that we have to open our hearts and our lives to the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to invite the Holy Spirit into our life so that power, that dynamite can come and help us to live whom we want to be and whom God is calling us to be. Well, at the end of our daily devotionals, I'm going to say a prayer uh, on many of the days, and I'm going to read a prayer or say a prayer and encourage you to pray this with me every day. And it's a prayer of invitation for the Holy Spirit to come into our life. It's a prayer of asking the Holy Spirit to be in us and, and upon our lives so that we would receive this power. Why don't we pray together? right now. Wherever you are, why don't you close your eyes? Why don't you just put yourself into that quiet place and say, God, would you come to me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Or maybe we could say that slightly different. From my head to my heart, across the entirety of my life, may the power and the victory of the cross be upon me and in me. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are God. You were sent from God our Father and Jesus your Son to me. Fill me more deeply with your presence. You are wanted in my life. You are welcome in my life. You are needed in my life. Holy Spirit, deepen my knowledge and personal relationship with you. You are the power of God alive in me. You are the strength of God within me. You are the enabler of God within me. Holy Spirit, you enable me to hear the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, you enable me to respond to the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, you enable me to act according to the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, you enable me to love in keeping with the voice of God in my heart. Lead me in truth. Guide me in wisdom. Strengthen me in courage. Holy Spirit, come upon me in power and have your will in me. Amen. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 
My prayer for you in these days is that you would encounter the Holy Spirit exactly where you are. I want to encourage you that as you listen each day, don't so much listen to my words because my words will come and go, but rather listen to the voice of God within you. It's more important that you listen to God within you than you listen to what I have to say and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you. And as you say that prayer, which you can play over and over again, or you can download in the extras tab. If you have a look, there's a tab. Uh, and, and in the extras tab, you can see that prayer. It's written there where you can print it out. And you can pray it over and over that the Holy Spirit would come more deeply into your lives. Hey, God bless you. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.